while Ohio State prepares for Illinois tomorrow night, Michigan making news off the field today as embattled athletic director Greg Brandon has resigned as the Wolverines have been struggling on the football field in the bleachers and losing PR battles on a weekly basis as well. The Buckeyes are hoping that they left the offensive struggles in the Happy Valley after last week's double overtime win. Mark has more in tonight's Buckeye Beat. Coming off a win over Minnesota to improve to 4-4 four four on the season, Urban Meyer calls the Illinois D much improved, but they are allowing over 34 points a game. Wes Lunt, more of a classic drop-back quarterback, is out for the Ohio State game, so the fighting Illini offensively will go with Riley O'Toole at quarterback. He's more of a dual-threat signal caller. He's making plays. He's a playmaker. And, you know, he, whether he's running the ball, distributing the ball uh, to a variety of receivers, reading the option game, he is a playmaker. And I think he's got great momentum right now. And so that's, to me, that's what stands out. You don't say, like last week, you would say, well, that kid is a big, tall gunslinger, got a strong arm, right? This guy is a playmaker. We are getting better on defense, uh, playing a little bit of swagger and uh, a little more confidence. I can tell with the way our coaches are coaching and, and more, more importantly, our players are going after the, the way they're just the behavior and the way they go after the game. So He's more aggressive, more aggression out there. You know, people are playing tighter coverage, like I said. Uh, people are making plays on the ball. You know, you see the DBs making plays. Last year we was like the worst unit. Now we're coming out and being, making plays and becoming one of the best units. So I would definitely say that's the ultimate change, that our pass defense has really improved. Illinois head coach Tim Beckman, a former Buckeye assistant under Jim Trussell, also served on Meyer's staff at Bowling Green. The two talk quite often on the phone. He's a, he's a colleague and a good friend, so it's more conversations about our families. And, and uh, his father's actually, I'm very close with his father. He's an old football coach. Uh, he's a real coach back when I call him. And so, uh, not advice. He certainly, we don't talk football because we're in the same league, but a lot of respect for Tim. And I think he's, you watch his team, they're getting better. Now it's just a matter, you know, how much better can they get? Because I think their, their players are well coached. Uh, I'm just speaking about their defense. Even Tom Herman said this is one of the better coached defenses we're going to face. So uh, more friendship conversation than anything else. And, of course, Tim Beckman isn't the only Illinois coach with Ohio State ties, as Tim Salem, former Buckeye quarterbacks coach, is on the staff. A couple other ties with the Ohio State staff on this Illinois team as Mike Miller from WMA 1150 our Buckeye insider joins me now and Mike Tim Beckman is he growing into this job at Illinois he did not get off to a very good start with the fighting Illini some people thought maybe he they overreached in the hiring of him didn't have all that much success in Toledo and he's been on the hot seat basically since he was hired yeah. in Champaign the win over Minnesota last week may go a long way in keeping Tim Beckman Tim Beckman in Champaign. Yeah, I agree with that, Mark. And uh, I contended at the time when he was hired that he hadn't really proved his medal as a head coach long enough at uh, Toledo. Uh, but that showed kind of a kind of a dearth of successful mid-major coaches. And Illinois thought Tim Beckman, with his extensive uh, background as an assistant at some big shows, uh, was the guy. Uh, obviously, he struggled big time. It was lucky to still be there, coach. And yeah, if he's making strides, he still hasn't completely proved. It. I guess he's got four games to prove it against some quality opposition. Certainly the schedule gets tougher for Illinois starting with Ohio yeah. State. The Buckeyes, I think there's probably a residual glow factor coming off this Penn State win. The fact that they escaped Happy Valley. Uh, Urban Meyer said he didn't want to say relieved to get the victory, but kind of that is what he felt as they had double overtime win. How much can they build off that victory? I think they can build a lot off it, quite frankly. Uh, uh, with the leadership now that's undeniable is quarterback JT Barrett clearly has proven that this is now his team. He has taken ownership in that regard. And, and one of the things that caught my attention Saturday late night or Sunday morning late night after the game, Joey Bosa kind of made an offhanded comment how, how this team has really come together as a team now because of the experience at Penn State. And sometimes that's a throwaway comment, but I think there's a lot to read into that as you're more than halfway through the season. We got to talk about Joey Bosa. Big Ten Defensive Player of the Year is also named a National Defensive Player of the Year. Two and a half sacks, the one over Penn State, including the, the walk-off sack they're calling it now, was he brought down Christian Hackenberg, <laughs> blew up a running back. Really, the running back is who tackled Hackenberg as he got thrown back into him. Joey Boza, just a sophomore, so he's going to be back next year as long as he stays healthy. He can't go to the NFL yet. 
Joey Bosa is really just making a name for himself right now. Yeah, he's so much got it going on, Mark, that in, in my office when we walk around and somebody does something positive and they get complimented, they don't say thank you. They're just going like this all the time now. So it has reached a whole different level. I was impressed, though, frankly, where Coach uh, Meyer talked about how Bosa, he practices as hard as he plays. Then after a while, that just becomes who you are, and, and he's done it for, uh, what, seven straight games this year. Yeah, absolutely. He's already got eight sacks on the year, which tied what uh, Noah Spence had last year as the big, as the Ohio State's leader in sacks. Took 12 games for Spence to get to eight sacks. Bose has done it in just seven. As uh, the other hero of that game, JT Barrett, coming off this knee injury, he's not expected to miss any time against Illinois. They're going to hold him out of practice this week. That was the plan going forward. Mentally, is the knee going to be a concern for JT Barrett? I, I wouldn't think so. We've heard all along about how mentally tough this kid is, but you go out after having a, a right. knee injury, and all of a sudden, are you, is, do you think he might be concerned about planning this way or that way on that MCL? I, I would hope not, and I like the what I heard early in the week from Coach Urban Meyer, how they were going to watch it closely. They were going to protect JT because it's not about conditioning at this point. It's not about even about reps and necessarily. So, uh, so they're going to watch it. And, you know, if it's an issue, uh, they'll know about it uh, before it becomes a game problem. So I, I don't think so. I think a guy like uh, uh, JT Barrett, even though he's a red shirt freshman, has been through the wars uh, so many times that he's he's ready to do it again. Now. Cameron Johnston against Penn State had a 45-yard average on his punts, yet he wasn't the Big Ten Special Teams Player of the Week. Instead, it was the Illinois punter, yeah. Justin Duvernoy, who had the honors. We could have two of the best punters in the Big Ten going toe-to-toe -to -toe in this game. Which is probably a big thing when you get into November and the uh, and the the weather is not so good. I would say the difference is that Cameron Johnston's opportunities are much more rare uh, in that Ohio State's offense is generally more successful. Duvenoy has punted quite a few more times, I think, uh, than Cameron Johnson, but still a tribute to either guy. 261 yarders and uh, another four punts over 50. Of course, that was yeah. in Champaign. We know what the wind can be like <laughs> in time. Champaign, Urbana. Yeah. Your prediction for Saturday night under the lights for Ohio State? Well, as usual, high hopes for uh, the Buckeyes against Illinois. An Illinois team, yes, they've made changes with their with their offensive status with the new quarterback and the like, but the defense essentially remains the same. They've surrendered a lot of points, and I think back in the friendly confines of Ohio Stadium, Buckeyes are going to put up some numbers and and are probably going to roll over Illinois, quite frankly, although not looking ahead, uh, something like 42 to maybe 21. All right, thank you very much, Mike. And, you know, we mentioned Tim Beckman was a Finley grad. He's not the only Finley grad on the Illinois staff. Tyler Johns, the Waynesfield Goshen grad, offensive lineman at Finley, he is a graduate assistant on the offensive coaching staff for the Illinois Fighting Illini. Andy, back to you. Awesome note there. Good to see Tyler in football still. More from Meyer and the Buckeyes, always available online at Buckeye Insider's YouTube channel. And Buckeye Insider, of course, every Tuesday at 10 p.m. on WTLW. Mark and Mike preview the big weekend. Then you can catch Sunday at 1130 in the morning, just as you're getting home from the early service at church, a chance to catch Buckeye Insider from the night before. So you can join Mark and Mike all throughout the week, including that Urban Meyer Press Conference Mondays at 9 p.m. on the West Ohio Sports Network.